Hi guys, I'm back again at Aquarium of the Pacific and today we're going to get an in-depth look at some of the exhibits and aquariums that they have in their new wing, Pacific Visions. So come along as we check everything out. So when you walk into Pacific Visions, this is the first room that you're going to come into. It's a very much geared art exhibit. Above me you can see this beautiful phytoplankton. If you look around on the walls, you can see phytoplankton, uh, maybe I think I saw some uh, snail villagers, uh, a whole bunch of microscopic animals that you wouldn't be able to see with naked eyes, but they have them blown up and put on this wall. You can see all of their beautiful intricate detail that you wouldn't normally be able to look at. So here we are at the Infinity Coral Wall. They have a couple different examples of what healthy reefs look like, what a reef at night looks like, what a bleached reef looks like, and the comparison of a healthy coral within a bleached reef. So you can see behind me all of these white corals. They're kind of elegant, but the white is a sign of death in a coral. This blue coral, in amongst all the white coral, is a healthy coral. So if you're out in the water and you see a bunch of white corals, that means that they're all dead. Um, so we're aiming for beautiful, colorful corals. Coral depiction behind me is a sign of a healthy reef. As you can see in here, the corals are really large. Now, if you don't know, coral is a very slow growing animal. So, for corals to get to the size of the ones in here, it means that they've been around for a really long time and the environment is a good, healthy environment. So, this is what we want to see out in our ocean. So on these panels behind me are a three-dimensional reef. It's based on a real reef out in Hawaii, and they were able to model it and put it on these panels. Now what's really unique is if you listen close, you can hear some crackling behind me. Now all of those noises are the sounds on the reef. Did you know that fish talk to each other? Some fish make funny clicking noises, some snap, different pops. So if you listen close, it might on. All the fish and the animals on the reef communicating with each other. Pretty cool, huh? We are here in the orientation gallery for the pre-film for the Honda Pacific Vision Theater main event. Now, while you're waiting for the film to start, you can splash around on the interactive splash pad, have a little fun before your show starts. So this is the Honda Pacific Visions Theater. Behind me and around me you can see a 130 foot wide, 180 degree screen that completely immerses your view of vision. Now directly below and behind me is a giant disc in the floor that is able to elevate for stage performances as well as be used as a projection screen. Now something else that's really cool about this theater is it's 4D, which means you're going to see things on the screen, you're going to hear sound, but you're also going to feel things and you're going to be able to smell things and your seats might even shake a little bit. Make sure you come check it out. So once you're done with the film, you come upstairs and this map behind me is what greets you. Now a lot of times when you think about human population growth, it's growing at an exponential rate. But have you ever thought about how all of those people in the world are going to be fed, how they're going to get enough water and have truly healthy, sustainable lives? And when I say sustainable, I mean having enough of the basic needs that they need to survive. This map has a great visual of population and things that we need to think about when it comes to supporting the world's populations. Can you take a guess as to what the population globally would be in 2100? So Pacific Visions has a whole bunch of interactive touch screens. You can see this giant wall behind me as well as all of these touch tables that talk about different resources we need to sustain our populations. When it comes to your food, have you ever considered what goes into producing it? So take beef for example, nearly a thousand gallons of water goes in to make one large hammer. That's a lot of water. So Aquarium of the Pacific is really unique in things that you can find here and this exhibit behind me is no different. These are endangered delta smelt and they are only able to be found on exhibit here at the aquarium. Now a couple years back when researchers did a survey of them in their native habitat they only found two. The last survey there were none. Now these guys came from the aquaculture facilities at UC Davis and is why we're able to enjoy them here on exhibit. They have a very special conservation message, so definitely stay tuned for a post about that. 
So there's a lot of stories out there about how fish farming can be negative to the environment. But these California yellowtail fish have a, a totally different story. Now obviously, based on the name, they're native to California and those colder Pacific waters. And they do really great when they're farmed. So these guys school together. They're really good. Um, you can put a bunch of them in a small space. So like this fish farming cages, they do great in those environments. And if you feed them with a sustainable source of food, it's going to be an excellent low energy intensity source of food to supplement all of those local meat sources. And you're going to have local fresh seafood on a regular basis. Did you know that a single oyster can filter 50 gallons of water a day, 50 gallons. That's an amazing filtration capacity. So can you imagine how much water that a whole oyster reef can filter? It's quite a lot, right? So not only can oysters filter water, but they also help to stabilize shorelines and help to reduce erosion. Something else that they do is they offer habitats for small little invertebrates and fishes and even offer a nursery for little baby fish and animals that are growing up along the coastline. Now, with any hope, oysters and oyster restoration are going to be the foundation for living shorelines that will pop up all along our coast. Because you know what? Sea level rise is something that we're eventually going to have to deal with.